The Witch Queen DLC brought a number of exceptional pulse rifles into the sandbox, three of which are craftable and can be tailor-made to your liking, while there isn't a single craftable hand cannon right now. So between the Ogma, the Syncopation, Insidious, the Collective Obligation, and the Peace of Mind, players have lots of options for diving headfirst into the world of pulse rifles in both PvE and PvP activities. And since the new raid has unstoppable champions, and so does the seasonal activity, and pulse rifles can stun unstoppable champions with the seasonal artifact mods, that means that even more players are picking up these new pulse rifles and integrating them into their loadouts. Now, as a pulse rifle fanatic, this season has been super fun for me as I've already got thousands of PvP kills with uh, new pulses alone. So in this video, I'm going to offer some tips to help you understand how to best utilize these new pulse rifles in PvP. And in the background, uh, you're going to be seeing footage from six different 20 plus kill streaks, six different We Ran Out of Metals that I got in just one sitting using my favorite pulse this season, the Peace of Mind. Uh, mine has enhanced perpetual motion and enhanced adrenaline junkie. Hopefully you dig that background gameplay. The first bit of advice I want to give you is to pick an archetype of pulse rifle that suits you, right? There are several different kinds of pulse rifles and knowing what makes them different is a useful tool. So this will help you understand what's expected of you in an engagement, knowing more information about your archetype of pulse if you're gonna uh, if you're gonna win that engagement, it it's also gonna help you understand what's happening to you when you're dueling against another pulse rifle. So sidelining exotics and pulse rifles that cheat some of the systems with specific perks. If we just look at the standard legendary pulse rifles, you've got rapid fire frames like the one I'm using in the gameplay, lightweight frames adaptive frames, high impact frames, and aggressive frames. The rapid fire frames include weapons like Iron Banner's Time Worn Spire, the Grid Skipper, uh, or this season's pulse rifle, the Peace of Mind, shown here. The lightweights include things like the Outbreak Perfected, the Chattering Bone from the Last Wish Raid, and this season's new world drop pulse rifle, the Ogma PR6. Adaptives include the Bygones, Third Axiom, and the Last Perdition. High Impacts include popular pulse rifles like the Messenger from the Trials of Osiris, Redrix's Claymore, and Legal Action. And finally, the Aggressive Frame Pulses include the Sacred Provenance from the Garden of Salvation Raid, the Blast Furnace from Black Armory, and the New Insidious from the Vow of the Disciple Raid. Uh, these are the four round burst pulses. So there are lots to choose from, and they vary based on how many rounds per minute they fire, and how many rounds are fired in a burst, and how much precision and body shot damage do they do. So I don't want to spend too much time breaking down all the numerical values for every stat, but the important thing to know is how fast you can kill another player optimally with these archetypes, and how many headshots is it going to require of you. So let me hit those values really quickly for you help you kind of understand maybe which archetype might be the best fit for you. Rapid fire frames, they require you to hit nine bullets, which is three bursts. Seven of those bullets have to be headshots. This results in a 0.8 second optimal TTK. Lightweight frame pulses require you to hit eight bullets all to the head across 2.6 bursts to kill in 0.87 seconds. Adaptive pulse rifles require you to land just seven bullets five to the head and two to the body to kill in 0.93 seconds. So in other words, they're more forgiving, but the trade-off is a slightly slower optimal TTK. High impacts require six bullets to connect, five of them to the head and one to the body, that's two bursts, in order to kill in 0.67 seconds. Now stop for a second. This is the fastest possible TTK of any pulse rifle base, right? And this can be achieved with no damage buffs, just five to the head, one to the body. So this is what makes high impacts, in my opinion, statistically the best pulse rifles in the game. But then you consider that the messenger can roll things like kill clip and desperado, which then drops the TTK even further. This is what makes the messenger, quite frankly, the most powerful pulse rifle in the game. Now it's not my favorite, and there are several that I prefer more and, uh, and we'll get into more reasons to select a pulse rifle other than just the TTK in just a moment. And lastly, 
you have the aggressive pulse rifles, which require eight bullets to land. These are the four round burst ones. They require eight bullets to land, so two full bursts, two to the head, or uh, six to the head, I'm sorry, and two to the body. Uh, to kill in just two bursts at an optimal TTK of 0.73 seconds, which is the second best-in-class TTK for pulse rifles. So the first thing that you have to decide is, do I want the fastest potential time to kill, or do I want some built-in forgiveness in terms of accuracy or ease of use? You know, what's the most important thing to me? And beyond that, different pulse rifles also have access to different perk pools. So maybe your build centers around the usage of grenades. So Adrenaline Junkie is a must for you. Well, that is going to help limit your uh, options for pulse rifles. So you can pick one that suits your build. Or maybe you're using the Dragon Shadow. So something with Kill Clip is an obvious pairing, right? There's lots of factors to consider. So make sure that you're actually, when you're selecting a pulse rifle that's going to suit you, Pull up the information on that pulse rifle. Go to you know Destiny Tracker or Light.gg. Type in the name of the pulse rifle, and then scroll through its perk pools and try and find a combination that suits you and your build. So there's lots of factors to consider. For me personally, I like to prioritize stability and momentum. Okay, and I'll get to momentum later. A lot of people obsess over recoil direction. So let me use this pulse rifle in the gameplay as an example of this. Many people have been telling me that I'm doing it wrong with this pulse rifle. Most folks are out there saying you have to go with arrowhead break as your barrel option because it makes the recoil direction perfectly vertical, and that is true. It does give it a perfect 100 value, which means the recoil pulls straight up. You'll notice that mine has a recoil direction value of 73, giving a slight northwest pull on the recoil. So people see that recoil direction and they freak, right? They think, oh man, that's going to make so many shots miss. But the thing, or, or they think that it's like uh, there's a lot of um, effort required to manually control that recoil. Like, oh man, that means I have to pull down on the thumbstick down to the right in order to keep it from popping up to the left, right? <laughs> but the thing to remember is that recoil direction is not the same thing as recoil severity. So I built my pulse to have high stability with enhanced perpetual motion and a corkscrew rifling instead of arrowhead break to give buffs to stability, range, and handling. So for me and my role, arrowhead break fixes a problem that doesn't really exist. While my recoil isn't straight up and down, you literally, you can't tell. I mean, just look at the gameplay. The recoil is so timid that it has absolutely zero effect on whether or not the final bullet in the burst lands. Aim assist, hitbox sizes, and then you couple that with my high stability stat, right? So aim assist and hitbox is coupled with my high stability means that a slight pull to the upper left is not going to have any impact on the gun's performance. The bullets are still all going to hit if I pull, uh, if I pull the trigger when my reticle is on the target, right? So this is... Uh, you know, even when my opponents are running and sliding and jumping, and you can see that frame, you know, frame for frame in the gameplay. So remember, get that stability up. That is what really matters. The recoil direction is, um, I mean, it can be an important thing if it's really bad, a really bad recoil direction. But you get it in the 70s, you know, something that's going to be between the uh, the 10 and 2 o'clock on the, on the clock face, right, for where it's going to pull. Um, that's manageable. If you get the, the stability high, the severity of that recoil is not going to be very bad, and you can keep this thing under control without even really thinking about it, right? So remember, get that stability up, even if it's by using a perk like Zen Moment, heating up, or in my case, perpetual motion. I love heating up, but I ended up landing on perpetual motion and changing my mind on this pulse, and that happens from time to time. You know, you go in with a plan, you execute that plan, and then you switch the plan because it didn't play out the way you thought it would, right? And that was the case for me. Perpetual motion now is up for me for every engagement, not just the ones right after I get a kill. So I like that blanket buff to reload speed, stability, and handling. It gives me some more um, room to operate in my in my armor builds, right? If I, if I don't need to use armor energy on Pulse Rifle Reloader, that frees me up to use things like Grenade Kickstart or whatever it might be instead, right? Uh, and the last thing I want to mention is the importance of high caliber rounds. Um, high caliber rounds is a must for me when it comes to pulses. If I don't have it, I'll settle for ricochet rounds. But high cal is going to increase your range while also inducing more flinch on your targets. 
And uh, at pulse ranges, you're often going to be dueling sniper rifles and linear fusions. And trust me, it matters. There's nothing more infuriating than landing consistent headshots on somebody just to get domed through your barrage of bullets by a special weapon, right? Anything you can do to cut the chances of that happening is a win. It's still going to happen, but not as much. Not as much with high caliber rounds equipped. Uh, the next bit of advice that I want to give is about positioning. Pulse rifles are really good at controlling lanes and choke points, so make sure that you're looking for spaces like that that you can lock down. But when you're trying to control these positions, also make sure that you put your body close to some form of cover so that if things go south, you can quickly break line of sight and recover your health. You never want to just stand out in the open away from cover, okay? Those spaces are, I call them no man's lands, right? Those spaces are meant for passing through, not staying in, right? Those open spaces with no cover, those are for passing through. They're not for staying in. Open areas are death traps. Use them as a means of repositioning, but never as a position to hold. That's the area that you want to be in control of, not the area you want to get caught in. So remember to find lanes and choke points to lock down, but stay close to cover and leave yourself an escape route. The next bit of advice, don't stay zoomed in for long periods of time. Frequently descope and check two things. This is really important. Check two things when you descope. Check your radar for red pings and check your HUD to look at your teammates' positions on the map. You look around and you look for the names of your teammates. The information that you get from those two things will tell you exactly where the enemy is spawning. You'll notice spawn flips before they even happen so you can prepare adequately and get posted up to look at and control the new choke points or lanes that matter. Spawns flip regularly in Destiny and reading the signs that it's about to happen is one of the skills that separates a decent player from a good player. And it's a skill that will help you preserve your kill streaks as is showcased in the gameplay today. I'm well on my way to 700 we ran out of medals right now. And that's arguably the most important skill that helps me get those long kill streaks. The next bit of advice I want to give you is to have a plan for when someone pushes you. Pulse rifles can be used in close quarters, but they're rarely your best bet. Okay, Save your grenade charges and melee abilities so that when someone manages to close the gap on you, and they will, I promise, you'll have a clear plan for dealing with them. I like using sidearms and SMGs more than anything, but shotguns and fusions are great choices too. Use your grenade or your melee ability preemptively to prime them and then clean them up with your backup weapon. Then you're right back to doing what the pulse does best. And finally, the last bit of advice I want to give you is to consider finding a way to build some momentum perks into your kit. Pulses can be ramped up and deadly with perks like these. I'm using Adrenaline Junkie in this video, and that's helping me to chain more and more kills. It drops my TTK when I get that. I can, I can drop people in just two bursts with a rapid fire frame pulse rifle. And it's gonna start reducing the number of headshots required, so my ratio of body shots to headshots can be a little bit more forgiving. And I can just keep shooting uh, after the first kill and get another one and another one. So pulse rifles, they're great at racking up several kills in a row because of the size of their magazines. So take advantage of that. People tend to be more reckless at longer ranges, so they'll give you lots of opportunities to take shots at them. So, there you go. There are some of my best tips for mastering pulse rifles and managing to rack up lots of kills with them. People will always criticize your gameplay and playstyle choices. It's what they do in Destiny, so don't pay them any mind. There's going to be comments even on this video where they're like, Oh, dad rifles and just camping and laning. Listen, your job is simply to enjoy your video game. Okay, and don't let them steal that from you. And I hope that this video helped you understand as a pulse rifle user how to better do that, how to enjoy your pulse rifles. Thanks so much for watching the video. Feel free to leave a like on it only if you enjoyed it. And I'm currently really trying to push my Twitter account up to 150,000 followers. So we uh, passed 100K, which is a huge milestone. I'm trying to push to the next one so that I can make another go at verification, which opens up a lot of new doors for me in terms of networking in the gaming industry 
and it leads to better overall content for my channels because I can get access, early access to different games and things like that with that verification badge uh, as a tool that I can use to reach out and network with other developers. So I use Twitter to post about my personal life, weigh in on relevant topics and game balance discussions, and have fr uh, fun like a little banter with other content creators. I post lots of highlights and clips there too. So feel free to click the link to my Twitter page in the pinned comment below and drop me a follow. I frequently respond to people there too, so it's a great way to interact with me. Thank you so much for supporting my content. Be warm and well-fed, my friends, and I hope to catch you in the crucible.